Hello and welcome to another LabVIEW video. This is a Koch curve, also known as a snowflake curve. It is an iterated function system using two linear transformations. The transformations represented by these rectangles are repeated a number of times, making the Koch curve appear. These functions make up a function system. The letters A to F represent a particular transformation and X and Y are points in a graph. For convenience, the range of the points are usually between zero and one. The functions can also be seen as a matrix multiplication. This is the form I'm using in the instrument that I'm going to demonstrate in a moment. These are the values used. Choosing a transformation is done randomly. Here are the values stored in matrix form in two two-dimensional vectors and they are converted to matrices. For each iterator, iteration, one is chosen randomly. And this is the initial point, which is then padded with a one, and then added to the this function that performs the matrix multiplication. This function can be found under mathematics in the linear algebra palette and choosing A cross B. The X and Y values they are extracted from the resulting vector and bundled in a point cluster and then added to an array, which is presented in this xy graph. In order to make the graph have a convenient size, I'm running this little snippet once. This is a property node that you can find by right clicking on the graph. Choose create, property node, plot area, size, and all elements. Right click on plot area size and choose change to right. Right click on the connector and choose create constant. And there you can type in the width and height of the plot area size of the graph. On the front panel, I have made some changes to this graph under properties. You can see that under plots, I chosen to plot points, no lines, and I'm choosing a small plot size. Under scales, I've turned off auto scale and set zero as minimum, one as maximum, turned off grid style and colors. And for the Y axis, I've also checked inverted because instead of using the bottom left of the graph as the origin, I want to use the top left. And now, I will run the VI. And there is the Koch curve. This calculation took a little bit of time. So in the next video, I will look at ways to make this run faster. Until then, thank you for watching.